Doom, you can't even use items, so it just completely takes away that huge amount of health offset that a Chen naturally gives you inside of your lineup. And when you have something like a call down vacuum combination, it's actually going to be very, very strong for them. So question is, who's actually going to be able to win the middle lane? Because Pudge versus Doom, for the first couple of levels, kind of have to give the advantage to the Pudge, because the Doom can't really effectively trade hits at that early stage in the game. But again, there's probably going to be a lot of movement coming out from both sides. I would imagine both lanes are going to be avoiding each other again. Although I suppose Tongfu could potentially go aggressive here if they wanted to. Both teams moving on as a pack of five. Doesn't look like they're going to be heading to the same place anyway. We'll run through the lineups just so long. Yep, looks like they're going to go ahead and just take it easy. So starting on the side of Tongfu, Gyrocopter going to be farmed up by Hao. Going to have the Darkseer played by King J. Visage going to be handled by San Ching. Rubik played by Banana and the Doom handled by Mu on the side of Na'Vi. Chen going to be handled by Puppy. Once again, we'll have Alchemist farmed by Havost. The Nyx Assassin going to be played by Kuroki and Funnick handling our redheaded Windrunner. But the man of the hour, the master of disaster, the Pudge, going to be played by Dindy for the second time in this series. Just about ready to get underway. And both teams playing this ultra cautious. <laughs> Fu standing right on top of each other. They have Sit and Mu on up to the top lane. King J actually hanging around mid, at least for the moment. They are going to go on back in. But as the horn blows, we're ready to go. Game three, match point. Oh. Navi. Havost spotted out. Thought they were going to engage it. There's the haste rune. Fortuitous haste rune. And he's able to make it away. Dong Fu with a bit of a missed opportunity in Havost. Gonna run straight in a circle. <laughs> Say hello to him one more time before ducking back under his tower. So Tong Fu with a bit of a missed opportunity. Up at top, we are gonna see Mu setting up shop. Puppies in that jungle though. And Funic there as well here in mid. Already some rotation. Kuro gonna show his face. King J against the Pudge. And there's a mana burn. Looks like he's just gonna be hanging around just to try and help Dindy out, try to secure himself as much an advantage as, as an advantage as possible. Havos going to be under a lot of pressure down here on bottom as Tongfu opts to run aggressively as well. Yeah, they didn't want the Alchemist just getting a free lane, which I think is the right choice from Tongfu. And putting King J mid uh, against the Pudge, if you're a Darkseer versus a Pudge, you're always going to be able to shove the lane harder than he will, because in order to counter push, he has to use Rot, which obviously takes away from HP, so not really the best solution. But they do have the capability of keeping Kuro around middle lane just to allow Dendi to do well in the early game phases, but that puts a lot of emphasis on Dendi actually landing uh, just as many hooks as he did in game number one, if not more, because Kuro, unlike going to the safe lane to try to farm, he's not going to get any experience here, and if he does, he's taking away from somebody who needs it much more than him in the punch. So I feel as though these lanes currently working out quite well for Tongfu. The only one that is probably not going to be going too favorably is Mu in this top lane on the Doombringer versus a Windrunner. This is uh, pretty frustrating actually for him and once the Puppy starts coming top with Kuro, uh, the ganks are going to be very hard for him to avoid. We can see Kuro already making his way up. Down at bottom, we are going to have Kuro, or Havost engaged upon in first blood. Picked up by Tong Fu. Diving him under the tier one and you knew it was going to happen soon enough. Up at top, Navi rotating Kuro up looking to make something happen. And looking to put pressure on this Doom. Mu happy to just soak experience. Windrunner handled by Funic. We can actually see Mu is leading in experience by almost a full level. Now this is really troublesome actually for Navi. There's a lot of movement that they've had to use so far. They need to make something happen. Uh, killing Mu would be ideal. But honestly, between those heroes, this Nyx doesn't have a stun yet. Like he needs Impale and he's not even halfway currently to level 2. And now Tranquil Boots completed on Mu as well. So everything for Tongfu I think going well so far. But here comes the gank. Here we go. There's the mana burn. Puppy just doing some auto attacks. Power shot. Mu walking his way back. The Ursa misses with the clap. And Mu chased all the way back into the woods, trying to eat himself up and hang on. He's got help. That's the Rubik. Still three on two. Mu will end up dropping. There's a telekinesis on the puppy. Can they catch him? No, he got Funic. Funic, though. When running out, one auto attack. They're going to need at least one more. And Funic can't do it. Power shot, finally. Not just that kill. One of the hardest working Windrunners in the business, San Sheng. Now their impale tries to disrupt his banana. And Sanshing are chasing him. 
And he's ducked into the woods, just trying to hide. Has no TP, has to know he's dead to rights. And just going to run out. Down at bottom, we're going to have another engagement, but we will see them finally track her down. And Tong Fu gets the return kill. Make it two to one. Yeah, I, I think Funnick was dead there no matter what. I didn't think he would actually use the salve, because even if he does salve back to full, he has no TP and no mana. There's no way he's actually going to get out of that situation unless for some reason they decide to completely leave him alone. But on the uh, on the upside, I guess Havos is left alone here for a little bit, so he's actually able to hit creeps for maybe the first time this game. He uh, unfortunately actually has 11 CS right now, which is pretty impressive considering the start that he was up against in terms of hero matchup. But all in all, Tong Fu is still looking pretty good. Uh, Dendi is actually tied in terms of overall CS with the highest on the map, which of course is the gyrocopter now, but King J not able to push the lane that much, and Dendi actually doing pretty well here. At Dendi almost level six, like you said, up pretty high. We are gonna see a DD picked up here by King J. Tong Fu stabilizing things out. They've left the gyro against Havos now. Gyro sitting at uh, actually under level by about a level, so certainly Havos gonna feel fairly comfortable here, though he is gonna be taking some abuse from the harassment. And now though, San Sheng rotating his way back down. Kuro making his way back down as well. A lot of movement very early on in this game. Three kills already in a four and a half minute game. Windrunner, almost level five. Bananas working on level four, almost halfway to level six for the Doom, but Bindi is now level six, so we'll see when he wants to start wandering around the map. Yeah, really the, the key point is seven. That's when your hook is the longest. It's 200 range increase per level, and of course it does 90 more damage. So having dismembered is great, but I think he's probably just going to sit here until he manages to get seven, then potentially go to that bottom lane, maybe try to score a kill on Hao, maybe even try to help top. But the one cool thing for Navi is that because of the tri lane has kind of abandoned bottom, there's still one support here, but the Rubik has decided to move uh, towards the top lane. That means that, again, Havos can farm, which is important because if he can't farm, and the situation, then they don't have anybody to fall back on during the mid-late game. Then he's even going for the max spray and concoction build. And King J and Pudge going back and forth, but both survive, make it away quite safely. They'll be able to bottle themselves back up. But already see Dindy getting a bit restless. And again, waiting to see when he is going to start to try and be that terror across the map. Tong Fu just continuing to rotate heroes around. And taking a look at Puppy, he's really been quite quiet all game. He's got 200 gold. He's just level four right now. Not too bad for six minutes into the game. Quicker he gets to six, better off they'll be, obviously. But at some point, this is, just has that feeling in one of those games. And it might not necessarily be Na'Vi. There's just going to be a string of kills, and one of these teams is going to look to put the pressure on and just put the pedal to the metal and not let up. Well, if you want any team to do that, it's going to have to be Na'Vi, because Na'Vi have that Chen, and it's really important to try to get some semblance of map control at an early stage in the game, and it's like a missed hook there, but Chen, he's level 4 right now, and once he gets 5, he's going to have to start trying to make something happen. Level 2 test of faith, of course, and then uh, you're going to be able to get two creeps finally, which is pretty darn important once you're level 5. But I do like Alchemist against Gyrocopter in general. Because once the Gyrocopter gets farmed, once the Alchemist gets farmed, what ends up happening is the way that Alchemist builds is he can actually focus. He goes for things like Basher. And the Gyrocopter can't necessarily burst him down just because of how innately tanky he is going to be. And again, because Alchemist has gone for a build that actually is built around fighting, um, I think it's actually going to be to their benefit. But we'll have to see. Haven't seen the Doom really do much of anything either. King J. Oh, juked him. First hook of the match, thrown wide by Dendi. Very nice play by King J. Tough to hit a moving target as it is. Much tougher to hit one that happens to be surged. Yeah, uh, last time I checked, being hasted is pretty difficult to land a hook on. <laughs> but Dendi's still looking for it, which is important. The thing is about Pudge, if you go and you try to apply pressure to the map, you're going to force people back no matter what. That's just the effect Pudge has. All the hooks. Oh, Max Rage finds her and gonna notch. His first kill of the game, he shot that perfectly. Small opening between the creeps, he was standing right about here and caught him at max range on that hook, two to two. You know what was really interesting about that is he walked past the ward while he was going towards middle lane and how was just like, nope, it's fine, just gonna chill here, it's okay, everything's fine. And now he's, uh, then he's actually going to pick up a smoke too, so he's going to continue to play this aggressive. And with how going mid and dying, they're actually leaving Havos completely uncontested now on the bottom line.
You know, this is why these lineups work so well. We saw the same thing in game one. Havost just left to his own devices, farmed up every item he needed, was way ahead. And it's the same <laughs> same effect now. You just had it Pudge is one of those heroes that changes the way the enemy has to approach the game. He will be sniffed out this time though. Mu looking to get the doom off of him. And nope, gonna get Funnick this time. There's a hook! Bailing his buddy out. And Funnick. Quite happy to have the Butcher on his side. Kung Fu with three at top now here in mid. We see King Jay has taked a, uh, retaken his station against the, uh, the Nyx Assassin, who's certainly looking for levels. But you want to talk about some gank potential. How about once Dindy and Nyx begin to run together? Once he finds six and has Vendetta, he's going to be free vision. Yeah, that's one of the nice things about their lineup is they have great heroes for playing aggressive and trying to find those kills. And I'm sure with Na'Vi, we're going to be seeing a lot more of them. King J, though, he's working his way towards that mech. He's actually almost got it. He's got his headdress money right now. He just needs to buy the recipe. And that's going to let Tong Fu pretty much group up and try to fight as five. That's one thing that their lineup can do quite well. And King J going to get concoction here bottom, but I think he's going to be fine. Yeah, he's just going to surge away. But Tong Fu's lineup fighting five versus five, if they doom the Chen, I think it's actually pretty uh, reasonable for Tong Fu to take some early game fights. Indy looking for a hook, spotted a few, and hoping they come back. There is one creep, and yep, hey, he's, he'll take the gold. It's fine. He's going to be hitting hooks one way or the other. Both teams had a ward there, so both were very well aware of what was going on. But uh, we're coming up on 10 minutes now, and as you mentioned, Havos is playing a bit of catch up. He's actually up to 37 CS, which is not bad at all. And Dindy continuing to just wander around, just patrolling the riverside, looking to make something happen, and nope. Bought it out, and, or just anticipated, or perhaps lucky from Visage, either way, hook off the mark. Yeah, he needs to start landing some of those, because he, as it stands right now, uh, no towers actually on the map at all. Uh, have gone down so when you start landing hooks and you have a Chen it's nice because you can just make the quick rotation over and try to apply pressure and we saw how scared Tong Fu were of the Pudge after hooks started landing there were people standing so far away from towers that they actually couldn't defend them anymore so we'll see if that's going to be the case here but again hello it's just free farming bottom he's going to be able to get his shadow blade sometime soon and he's gone for uh putting points in a Grievel screed now, so he decided not to max the Unstable Concoction. As soon as he realized that his team was pressuring enough on the map to get him some farm, he decided to put points into it, because why not, right? It just gives you so much extra income if you're down here and nobody's contesting you. Nana and Sun Cheng gonna find a pick, and Havo sniffs it out. Very nice awareness there, and Kuro has his eyes on King J. Looks like he spent his full Full repertoire, unable to get the kill though, but yeah, they walked, whenever they came down, they walked right over that sentry, and he must have been watching very, very closely to have spotted them. Two to two, 11 minutes in. And Kuro going to be sent back home, but tier one under a bit of pressure. We can see the game very close in terms of gold. The experience, though, slightly in favor of Na'Vi. Tops in net worth, though, three of the top four in net worth belonging to Tong Fu. Yeah, that's one of the upsides to their lineup. Because of the fact that Na'Vi has to move around so much to make things happen, uh, Tong Fu have more of a reactionary team. I think that's kind of been the theme for their lineups throughout this turn, or not this tournament, but at least this particular uh, matchup, is they are okay with the other team having a more aggressive lineup because their reactions are always strong and they know that when they get to the later stages of the game, it's actually going to be easier for them to take the fights. Because as good as an alchemist can be, once he gets farmed, a doom can eliminate one hero from the fight straight away. That's pretty much the strength of the hero. And then you have things like Gyrocopter as a secondary, well, not secondary carry, but another hero who can be a core. And then you have things like Darkseer while in team fights. And again, only one hero on Na'Vi is making BKB. So against those kind of lineups, Darkseer remains relevant for a very, very very long time so I do feel like Tong Fu are gonna have a slight edge the longer the game goes and of course we're gonna see Darkseer now finishing up the mech on King J. King J having the mech ready that's probably gonna be the word go for Tong Fu. Invis on Dindy though currently under cover of smoke will have the invis if he wants it he's gonna have a lot of targets here does he have the firepower behind him is the question oh he gets the Darkseer instead of the Rubik locks him down but immediately has to bail out no what an impale caught the whole team backing back into the call down Dindy binding up more than he can chew. He will be cleaned up. Now Puppy caught out in the middle of the fight. Moo makes it out just barely by the skin of his teeth. We're going to see the rest of the fight cleaned up by Tong Fu. They don't lose a single hero. A lot of damage done. But in the end, in the end,
The hook just ill-advised. He hooked, uh, hooked a hero out of an entire team and just didn't have enough behind him. Well, that was like the worst hero to hook, actually. I mean, King J is pretty much the hardest person to kill with the mechanism. That is the one guy that you really don't want to get. So Tongfu, they get the tier one mid. And this is one of those things where you start to have to wonder. Havos, he, he has a Shadow Blade now, so he can actually start to contribute. But you really want things like level two chemical rage. And you want to make sure that you have your treads at least finished before you start contributing. But it's going to be very, very soon where he has to start fighting. Because if things like that keep happening, you lose three heroes, you lose a tower. It's very easy for Navi's lineup to get behind. And once it's behind, you have to rely on pretty much the man himself, Dendi, to land some hooks. You can see the gold beginning to go not super heavily, still a 13 minute game, 3,000 gold, give or take. A decent enough lead in Tongfu, exactly. They're going to smoke up. They are not letting off the gas at all. They want to keep the pressure up and take these fights on their terms. Don't let Navi do what they did in game one. Don't let them out. Hobos uses the Shadow Blade. Sentry goes down and dust just to be safe. Vacuum back. Navi on the other side of the trees. Can do nothing but, oh, hook shot by Dendi who has a haste rune. Big man is moving, and he's going to be able to try to pursue someone down here. And hook off cooldown in one second, and the familiar is actually blocking him. Very nice control out of Tong Fu there. They're going to try to take this tier one. There's a shackle, does latch, and move all the visage familiars staying in the way, and oh, I missed it. What a, the timing would have lined up, but he missed the hook. And in the end, Tongfu, after picking off Havos, up. Oh, oh, he's got this member! Runic locked down, walls down just in case. Rubik, beating her down with his stick, keep, keeping Funic locked in place. Secures another kill, and Tongfu is going to continue to push. They're not done. Mech still hasn't even been used. There's a hook! How? Brought all the way back to the base! Cleaned up by the fountain, and now Puppy going to be caught out. King J re-engaged upon. Weird little skirmishes breaking out behind the tower. Good vacuum, and they're going to dust it as well. Now, Dindy getting back involved in front. San Shang going to be dismembered and cleaned up. In the meantime, King J trying to TP away behind the fight. Shackle does not latch. We actually just saw the Chen Pudge combo at the International. That happened. Yeah, now Havos is going to keep going at Moo. They want to go for this. Oh, no! Oh, no. Oh, hooked him back. The impale's there to bail him out, though. Visage Familiar's trying to help out. Doom on Dindy will probably seal his fate. But Moo will be cleaned up as well. And Dindy denied himself. Oh, he got denied by the Chen Free. Puppy oh. was following him with a Seder, yeah. They're, he tried to wait it out with the Familiars to last it, but they just didn't yep. do enough damage, so. Yeah, there you go. The crowd, the clear rooting interest, six to nine. Tong Fu still leading this game in terms of gold. The experience has gone back in favor of Navi, however. And the beautiful deny at the end, especially quite nice. But 16 and a half minutes in, still anybody's game. Both teams playing ultra aggressive. Now, a hero we haven't talked a whole lot about that probably we should, just because of the matchup he was in with Mu, was Funic. His role in this Windrunner is absolutely essential. He got a nice amount of experience. He's level 10. About to be level 10 anyway. And he, his shackles are going to matter so much in terms of these fights. As, as we pointed out, Tong Fu has the superior one with, the, at least right now, superior 5-on-5 five five team fight team. Solid play coming out of Funic. Going to be absolutely essential. If they're going to be able to deal with in, to deal with that, whenever the, the both teams do run into each other five on five. Yeah, I think what's probably going to end up happening is Navi are going to continue to play this aggressively. They really need to get towers. It's 17 minutes in with a Chen, and they haven't gotten any. I mean, they need to get at least one tier one. Puppy is very close to the mech, which is going to be nice for them. And whereas Funic, he was one versus one for a while, the rotation while helping Havos get farm hurt Funic. So Funic doesn't have his four staff yet, and he really needs it because when you get slowed down or you they go in for the vacuum, you want to be able to four staff out immediately. Even helps with things like Rubik and Tong. They're smoked up. They're looking for something here, but um, Navi pretty much is five man farming their own ancients, which is an interesting tactic. But looking at Tongfu pushing top, I think Navi's choice really is to just try to push mid. 
See, they're going to rotate over the top. At least look like they are sending a couple over. Then you kind of hanging out at the moment. He's going to take a path less traveled. We'll spot a haste room. Very nice pickup for him. Navi looks like they want to contest this. The tower at about half health. They do have a glyph. Kung Fu in a very defensive position, as they must be against Dindy. And the familiar is coming in. They're going to be using the stun. Tong Fu in no position to engage off of it, though. Looks like they might just, yeah, they will just go ahead and abandon this as the Seder gets their attention. Bad move. Mu going to beat him down, but now they're smoked up. Navi ready to fight, wants to fight. They're going to walk right across this entry, though. And here we go. Dindy. Oh, he threw it late. Trying to do it again, and now they have to fall back. Ryan, oh, banana still hooked. Oh, the Rubik grabbing the hook. And now they're going to be able to do a little hook of their own. Glyph going to be used. And the hook comes out. What a hook! Sanshin grabs out. They're going to mech through it. The Havos is just going to town. He is doomed, though. Now going to be cleaned up. The call down connects on a couple. The rest of Tong Fu falling back. Another hook. Going to grab him back. But Dindy using that haste rune. Falling back. Three for one trade that time. And Tong Fu is beginning to grind Navi down a little bit. They got a five kill lead as we approach 20 minutes. They get the tower, hovering right around 5,000 gold to their advantage and bringing the experience back into line as well. So Navi definitely gonna be feeling much more under the gun now. We're crossing that point where, I mean, Havos right now is not in bad shape in terms of net worth. He's sitting at 6,500. He's right there with the gyro. The only one that's ahead really is Mu though. On our Doom, he's got a Shadow Blade and his drums, but he's going to continue to just get bigger and bigger because of the way Devour works. Yeah, the longer the game goes, he, he's very similar to Alchemist. He's one of the better farmers in the game, so whatever his next item choice is going to be, I'm sure it's going to be fantastic for the team. The one thing that kind of bothers me about Navi right now is that they're actually relying on things like fountain hooks to defend their tier ones. <laughs> yeah. When you have to rely on stuff like that to be able to take fights, you're not necessarily in the greatest of positions, and we just had a good glimpse of what the Alchemist is not going to be able to do during team fights if the Doom decides to just Doom him. Because Puppy died without even using his ultimate. I mean, Hand of God wasn't even pop. He still doesn't have his mech. Then it's 20 minutes in. So Tong Fu, I think this is pretty much their game to lose right now. They have a pretty distinct advantage. They're going for Roshan. I don't think that Navi can really do anything about this. If they walk down there, they need Pudge, right? And Dendi actually had to TP to the tier two mid, so he's not even gonna be here in time. Free Roshan here for Tong Fu. Medallion certainly making it an easier time. They will be in, in position if they want to engage off of that and see what he got. Got Acid Spray, not a bad steal for the Rubik there. Just now, Phase Boots are done on the Alchemist. Shadow Blade plus a Hyperstone coming out for Havos, so certainly building to try and get the job done right now. Needs that armor, needs a bit more survivability, but Tong Fu, as you mentioned, just in such a great position right now. PKB done on how? with his Aegis. And here we go, they're gonna try it again, threw it late. And you know, Navi, every time they try something like that and it doesn't work, it's just more time that they have to sit back and know that they're four on five and all the more aggressive that Tong Fu can play because they know Dindy has to make his way back to lane. He's not gonna be TPing all that often. They almost caught up with a boast there near the Ancients, but he's gonna go ahead and grab them as Dindy waddled his, waddles his way back to the front lines. Well, like I said, it, it does waste time, but they kind of need it. I mean, they need to be able to just eliminate somebody from the fight, very similar to what Mu can do for Tongfu. So if he had been a little bit farther up, he would have been able to throw the hook, but the thing is there was a range creep in the way. And, there oh, it is. there it is, yep. Banana going for a ride on the Dindy Express. Welcome to the well. And 8 to 12 following that. That's twice now what is that like it's amazing well they got the courier they got the courier that's certainly a nice pick off well done there by Kuro making up a bit of ground and Navi hanging in doing what they can to free up space for Havost Havost not quite maxed out Grievel's Greed yet we actually see the gyrocopter getting the kill on the Nyx assassin so they did manage to track him down but um, Indy's gonna do it again oh oh close follow our little guy back and yeah, that, that one actual <laughs> melee creep on Navi's side saved the gyrocopter <laughs> traitor 
the mech now finished actually, so Navi now have an opportunity to maybe try to take a team fight, but it's just so hard for them because they're relying so much on Pudge, right? Like whenever you pick this hero, it is pretty much your core, even though he doesn't function as a normal hero who gets farm. But if he doesn't have a good game, then he doesn't really bring you a whole lot. And his hooks have been pretty close, but you need better than close. You need to make sure that you're landing them, you're getting important heroes. If you can get a fountain hook on somebody like the Doom on the Gyrocopter, like we saw him do once before, then you can look to defend your towers. But if it doesn't happen, Tonku's team fight right now is just superior. And I don't really think that Na'Vi can take a straight up fight right now. I completely agree. Trying it again. Nope. Pull down. Gonna catch two. Do they want to engage off of it? Looks like they might. Nope. Thought better of it. Shackle shot. Gonna latch to one of the familiars, actually, that can still move. Impale to follow it up. Here comes the voice. Gonna throw it on Sanchez. What a vacuum into the wall! Hand of God used immediately to buy them time to retreat. Nice play from King J. The hand of God. Allows Navi to get out of harm's way. We're 24 minutes in, but things are beginning to feel rather untenable for Navi. They have to shake things up, and they have to do it in a hurry. Yeah, there's a really uh, significant goalie right now for Tong Fu. It's just about 7,500, which at this point, you can turn it around, yeah, but did Navi have the tools to do it? I mean, you have a Windrunner who has a Force Staff. You have Pudge, who basically has treads in an urn at this stage in the game. And the Alchemist really is the only hope for Navi in terms of making it to that late game phase where you're going to be able to fight. But again, Tong Fu's draft just, it functions well against that kind of a lineup because if you're only relying on one hero to carry and the Alchemist needs to be the one who's huge, if you doom him, how does he carry his team in that fight? Like, how do you continue to fight if you if you can't use any abilities, even through BKB? I mean, it's it's a really tough situation for Navi to be in. So they're going to keep relying on those hooks. Let's just hope Dendi has them. And here we go. He's looking for one now. He's going to be telekinesis and actually sent home as he was trying to grab him, unable to do so. And for about the 15th time, he's going to have to walk back out to lane. I'm surprised Pudge isn't losing weight by now. He spent a lot of time walking from the base back out. Yeah, he's, he's spent... Uh, quite a bit actually going for these hooks and the thing is he can actually walk back out if he misses but if he lands the hook and the fight starts he can TP back to the tower that's kind of right. what they did during the bottom uh, bottom fight but Hello's gonna try to TP out here oh man it's gonna be close made it barely able to get away now Navi though in position they might try something Dindy's gonna try it again can he got him that time see you in the base move welcome home and <laughs> a post not that he needed to. Gives him a little assistance. And Dindy back up and ready to fight. Shows back up at the tier two. He just reclaimed in 60 seconds. And trying to find another target. Those familiars. So problematic for him. That's, that is what they do. Take a little bit of damage this time. But Dindy just man moaning and rushing right uphill. He's got Hal and Banana in front of him. Just doesn't have the mobility. Doesn't have to giddy up. Well, they kind of have to force it. When, whenever the Doom is dead, that's the one hero who can just shut out somebody completely. So that's when you want to try to go for it. But here we go again. Don't think he's going to get anyone this time. A little late in throwing it. Meantime, though, this has freed things up for Havost. Take down a tier one. He's completed his assault cure. He has his shadow blade up now. And going to begin to feel a bit more like an alchemist. So far, I mean, it's, <laughs> let's not lie, it's been the Dindy show. That's what we've all been watching. But Avos is going to end up being a big factor, a big, a big influencing factor once he does manage to catch up. You know, taking a look at the net worth, he actually has surpassed Mu and is on top of the gyrocopter as well. So he already is going to be able to start standing and fighting a little bit more easily. And makes me wonder, I mean, once, now that he's a bit more relevant, and especially once he builds perhaps one more item, does there come a point where they just start saying, okay, we don't need to send Dindy home every single time he throws a hook. Let's just let him hook, blow someone up, and then try to engage into them five on four afterwards. I think they're pretty much going to always have to send it back. I mean, just the way that their team functions right now. If you're relying on one hero, you need a fountain hook to turn back because, again, Halos just, he could just easily get doomed. And even if he gets sent home by the Chen, it doesn't matter. All Fonic getting caught mid. And there's a hook to grab move. Fonic win running away. Beautiful impale. Caught multiple targets. Here he comes back in. Vendetta plus power shot brings him down. Vacuum wall counter initiation. Cooldown's going to connect. A boast in trouble, isolated away from his team, will be cleaned up, and again Kuro comes in with the impale, now he's telekinesis back, double kill going the way of Sanxing this time, Hal showing off that BKB, and Dindy went for it again, 
Late on pulling the trigger. There's the grave chill on Puppy as he tries to retreat. Homing missile tracking down Funnick. Soul Assumption makes it a triple kill for Sanche. <coughs> Buyback out of Havos. He's going to get there just in time to see them turn tail and leave. The Tong Fu continues to pile it on. That makes it 16 to 10. And even though there's been a little bit of ground made up lately by Navi, mostly on the back of Havos, Tong Fu still in quite solid position. I mean, honestly, that initiation went as well as you could have asked it to. They killed Mu before he even ca got to cast Doom. I yeah. mean, that's that's exactly what you want if you're Navi. You do not want that spell to be able to go off, and it still just didn't matter. Havos needs, honestly, I think a BKB at this point, because the magic damage output on Tong Fu is way too high. He can't sustain through that, and even though technically you could still get doomed, you're not going to be taking a tremendous amount of damage, at least during the process. So we'll see what his next item choice is going to be. I think that Navi are still kind of in it, but if they lose, too many more small skirmishes like that, I think it might just become that kind of insurmountable lead where Tong Fu can pretty much do whatever they want and just run rampant all over the map. But Roshan going to be spawning here in about two minutes, probably going to be the next choice for Tong Fu at least to try and push in. They can give Hao uh, another Aegis if need be. And he's going to have a butterfly soon too, so Alchemist not really anywhere near an MKB because he has to make a whole other item first before he even starts it. It's kind of worrisome for, uh, for Navi right now. Tong Fu moving through the Radiant Side jungle, trying to find themselves a target. Map control, not something Navi can claim to possess anymore. They have two outer tier towers remaining in comparison to the four of Tong Fu, mid tier two, top tier two. But at this point, you know, Tong Fu can starve them out like this if they want. Just move into the jungle, occasionally bounce in lane, and kill off chin creeps. That certainly helps as a stray satyr spotted them out and will pay with his life. We're at 30 minutes right now, by the way, and Pudge only has eight stacks on Flesh Heap. He had double that at 25 minutes last time. That just goes to, sh to highlight the difference. And he's going to go for it. Up, oh, missed it. And it seems like their execution, that's been, let's call it what it is. It's, it's been lacking for about the last 10 minutes or so. Well, that one was pretty hard because you couldn't see anything. I mean, it's nighttime. They don't have any wards at all. Uh, Tong Fu are pretty much dominating the map right now, but it's just a desperation move to try to get something back, and King J having a gem makes it so Navi really aren't going to have vision ever, unless there's a, a pretty big mistake made, but Puppy buys one of his own, so he buys a gem to try to de-ward and, and get his part of the map back where Tong Fu have just littered uh, his jungle with wards. Even the top lane, they even have a lane ward there as well. And with Roshan being up any second, this is is the time where Navi has to try to fight. The downside is that if they try for a fountain hook around Roshan, Dendi's not going to be able to TP right back to the fight. He needs to hit somebody very high priority, like the Gyrocopter. I think the Dark Seer is also a good choice, and maybe the Doom. Speaking of Doom, Assault Cure is going to be done just in time for the ensuing Roche fight. Right now, though, it looks like Tongfu's not all that interested. Navi necessarily having to play pretty defensive here. Tongfu's actually just foregoing it. They've split back up into the jungle. I'm sure they'll make their way back down at some point. But for now, Navi taking our shot scout and going to find that nobody's home. So they're going to go ahead and enjoy the luxuries of their own jungle, at least for a little while, Tongfu. Can you just farm away? Havos still leads in net worth, but behind him, the next three in terms of net worth, all belonging to Tongfu. So their items coming much more quickly and much more frequently. And that's pretty much the worry. The whole war of attrition definitely going Tongfu's favor. Whenever you have full map control, it's just so much easier to get more gold. When Havos gets the BKB, though, there is an opportunity for Navi to possibly take a fight. And if it ends up being around Roshan, that could very easily turn the game for them. But alternatively, Tongfu, like AC done on Doom, he's now level 15, almost 16. When he gets level 3 Doom, man, that, that is just absolutely obnoxious. It does so much damage, especially. And even after that, if he wants to, he can go something like a Scepter. And Scepter, I think, would function well here just because, again, if you can shut out Havos forever just by walking next to him, I mean... <laughs> The rest of Navi's lineup doesn't do that much damage. They're relying on the Fountain to kill their heroes. So, yeah, troublesome still for Navi. I feel like Tong Fu could very easily just go for Roshan here if they wanted to. Tong Fu continuing to stick together very, very close. Not wanting to give Navi an opportunity to do this. To smoke or to catch them out at a funny angle. Havost not caught with the smoke. He will be visible, but visage familiars keeping an eye on the big man. They will go ahead and vacate at least for the moment. Tong Fu is beginning to make their way down a bit. Meantime, though, Hao has completed his butterfly. Even more problems for Navi and what Havost is going to be able to contribute. Yeah, Navi right now smoked up. 
They know that Roshan's up. They want to try to make something happen. If they could possibly get this, they definitely would still be in the game. But I think if Tongfu end up getting Roshan, it's going to be one of those situations where it's going to be that slow kind of painful, we can't really do anything about this anymore, kind of a lose your rack situation. So Tongfu playing it really passive though, maybe even a little bit too passive. I suppose though waiting the game out isn't going to do them any harm per se. As long as they don't end up giving away the Roshan, I think they'll be fine. Went for a blind hook, came up wanting. Tong Fu able to spread themselves out adequately. Roshan still looks to be the goal. They're hanging out between the tier one and tier two. Over on their side of the map. In the meantime, Navi has pulled back all the way to their tier two, obviously fearing any kind of a reprisal. And Dindy isn't there. But actually beginning to become a much more slow and strategic match. And again, compare that to game one, where it was very hectic. Not to say there wasn't great strategy involved, but it was much more frantic, is probably the words. This time, Tong Fu just very patiently taking their lead, trying to hang on to it. And Havost, as you mentioned, his importance cannot be overstated. Now they're going to smoke. Now they're going to try and give the old okie doke the end around. And Funning knew it was coming. That's why he just checked behind him. And they're going to run right into each other. Here we go. Mu spots him out. And they know he's there. They had the jam. Mu in trouble. Kuro, there's a nice vacuum. Only caught two. Call down's going to connect as well. How laying into them. Havos looking for a target right now. Stuck on San Sheng. The, the battle has broken up a bit. We just saw Dindy get sent home. And the rest of Na'Vi forced to spread out. Shackle doesn't lash, but it buys a little bit of time. Puppy might be in trouble. Blink off cooldown in 10 seconds, but will make it out of range before they can lock him down. 10 to 16, no deaths on either side there. Smoke, and they ran right into each other, but Navi immediately breaking things up. Dindy, though, back on the prowl, making his way through. We're going to hear the unstable concoction, and he's hoping to find someone. Havos going to end up exploding himself. Kaboom, but no targets to be found. Tongfu just retreating back to their side of the map. I think oh. for Tongfu, having Doom is pretty important, yeah. Nice attempt coming out from Dendi. Fortunately, not going to be successful. Uh, that fight was weird, though, because Mu walked in, and he doomed the Nyx. And I guess he didn't want the Impale to go off, which is okay, but I feel like Chen or Alchemist are pretty much the better choices. Even Pudge, I think, is okay, especially if he just turns on Rot or if he's, you know, being annoying and trying to get Fountain Hooked, I suppose. But the thing about dooming Chen is there's so much health that he gives his team. Level 2 Hand of God is 300 and Mech's 250. So that's 550 health on every single hero. Kuro didn't even die when he got doomed because the rest of Tongfu weren't close enough to follow up. And of course, he got healed for a very large amount of health. So uh, Mu just needs to make sure that he targets the right people with that. And I think team fights for them, honestly, shouldn't be too difficult. Tongfu beginning to reassemble. Roshan, still alive and well, that may very likely change in the near future. And as you said, I mean, at this point, you know, we're at 36 minutes in. Can't help but feel like this is, this Roshan, whenever it does occur, is going to be Navi's real last chance to have a saving moment. It's going to be a Hail Mary pass, and they've got to have it right now. So far, Tongfu just trying to assert control of the pit, not committed to going in. Navi, with plenty of wards down on the edge of the river, is exactly exactly what's going on. Being spread out at least at the moment. Big creep wave down the bottom. Will force a TP though. They're going to see that. They're going to know Havost is not present. And here we go. Moving their way in. Medallion used. Dindy up on the high ground. With Havost not being there. Going to be a very difficult fight. Closest place he can TP is the tier 2 mid. He's just going to farm for the moment. Hey, Major, yeah. They're just going to give it away. Aegis goes to Tongfu, and now charging back out. Dindy going to be spotted, and he gets, no, he doomed the chair. That's a much better choice. Oh, he got him. He got him. Not going to follow it all the way because we got a battle to watch with Puppy. Trying to get away from it. Going to be Telekinese back. They will be able to get him as well. There you So a one-for-one one trade. And wow, Hal still alive down there. Finally. Managing to bring him down, so that Aegis goes to no use. The fountain hook, quite successful, and it feels like a breath of air. It's almost as if Navi felt like they were drowning, and finally they're just able to break water and take a deep breath of air. Like I was saying, if they didn't have fountain damage, there is no way they would have been able to kill that gyrocopter. <laughs> that was an absolutely insane play and uh, actually keeps them in the game. I mean, that that if that didn't happen, 
It would have been probably a Rax, I think, for Tong Fu. And nonetheless, uh, still Tong Fu executed it well. They went in, they doomed the right target. It's just, man, if you get fountain hooked, even with an Aegis and a butterfly, you are not living through it. Most continuing to find his farm. He's got his basher up, plus 1,200 gold aside. And Tong Fu has once again spread out. Scythe device now complete on the Dark Seer. Very important item. Being able to scythe either the Pudge or the Chen, as the case may be. Though, truth be told, they're not, I mean, Pudge just isn't in these fights for the most part. It's not like game one where he was hooking and then dismembering. He's hooking and either you go to the fountain or you're, you're left and he's gone. And let's see another engagement breakout. Hero. Oh, there we go. The hook got him. Uh. Don Shing taking the long ride to Shanghai. Welcome home. Dominating. Navi gets another kill. Here we go. Kuro going to be caught out in the river at the same time. Four staff tries to get him to safety. Does not have carapace. Shackle shot. Almost perfect. Was perfect, but the impale caught everyone as well. Kuro now with the carapace. Counter initiation. Down goes the wall. That's just a boast. Chopping wood on banana, though. Gets the kill. Now he's going to go to work on King J. Here comes Dendi. Vacuum into the wall once again. He's dismembering. Mu going the to town on him. Havos makes it a double kill. Now we're going to get another one. Navi charging back out at King J. We'll make it a full five man wipe. They found that breath of air they needed with that one fountain hook. They're on their feet. They're chanting. All it took was one fountain hook. They found that breath of air. They found their pulse. And they have found their way back into this game. Taking down the tier two, charging at the tier three. They're gonna have a few more seconds, 20 seconds until the gyro responds. We're gonna see Doom actually buy back, but not in time to prevent the tier three from dropping. And Havos, he's going for it. Havos believes. Gonna be telekinesis down. Now the counter initiation. Drop down. Moo catches Funic and now caught out and the hook brings Hal back out. Havos going to toe on Moo. Hal is down. Moo and Havos going toe to toe. Soul Assumption does nothing. Tom Shane can do nothing. Four staff on Moo gets him back. Now they're gonna try to chase him. They got him. King J trying to find Funic. Four staffs to safety. In the meantime, Dendi still looking for yet another hook. Has it in two seconds. The creeps causing him some problems. The gem hasn't even been picked up yet. Familiars are going to drop, but it doesn't matter. They concede the melee racks. And Navi, who seemed to be out of options, seemed to be at the point of desperation, have fought their way not just back into this game, but back into the lead. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable play coming out of Navi. The chase on Akuro, keeping him alive for so long and managing to turn that around. And they even get the bottom tier one in addition. They're going to be pushing into the tier two. Tong Fu just lost so much during those last engagements. It all starts back with the fountain hook onto Hao after they got the Aegis. It was so difficult for them to recover from that because they needed the gyro's damage. And Hao didn't get his BKB off before the dismember and the base push either. So he just immediately died. Kuro was able to get his damage out. So. Avi, they re-established full map control, and now the shoe's on the other foot. Tong Fu's sitting inside of their base. Another fountain hook attempt, not actually going to connect that time, but still, Tong Fu, I, I can't believe this got turned around in them like that. I believe we're in an arena of people shocked at what Navi has accomplished so far. The game ain't over, still a lot of Dota to be played. But the point of desperation they had reached, you know, fountain hook, when you lose every fight that you don't land a fountain hook at, tends to mean things are a little bit troublesome. And it looked as if Tong Fu was ready to just slam that door completely. But again, that one big play and that big turnaround, King J caught with the shackle doesn't latch. And looks like, yeah, managed to get Shackle for himself. Very nice spell for Rubik to have stolen. Dindy goes fishing just to the left of San Sheng. And looks like Kuro poking his nose around. Roche going to be up in about four minutes, give or take. But Navi definitely playing more aggressive now. For the last 10 to 15 minutes, they did nothing but stick as five and sit more or less under their own tier twos. But now on the enemy side of the river, they feel large and in charge.
I, I honestly am speechless. Like, the fact that they were able to turn it around in that fashion is nothing short of miraculous. And Havos almost having the MKB, that's going to be massive. Dendi doesn't actually even bother throwing out the hook that time. There's no one in range. So uh, some dewording being done inside the base of Tongfu as well, which is a good thing because you definitely don't want Dendi being able to see in there. And this is really, really bad now for Tongfu because whereas before their gyrocopter was quite far ahead, now he's not. Now he's actually behind, especially if you compare to the Alchemist. Havos has had such a long time to recover, and now he is almost, well, not almost doubling, but he's got around 7,000 more net worth in the gyrocopter. And with the MKB now finished, I don't know if Hao can really do anything anymore, at least in terms of Havos. Yeah, Havos for, for a while there looked to be perpetually behind just because of how well the gyro knows how to. And how well the gyro can flash farm. Crowd excited to see the MKB pick up, nullifying. The dodge percentage on the butterfly pings like crazy. This is, could be a, a fight that decides this game if they have an engagement outside of these tier twos. Navi spotted out by the familiars. We'll see Stun go out, and he's going to go fishing and find Sunshine. Cleaned up, so immediately coming back out. And Kuro catches Banana. Shackle is there. Go in the towel. Call down on Moo. Moo being dismembered, being locked down, being killed off. And Hal can't stand up to the damage. Havos has gone crazy. That's a double kill for the big man with the little man on his shoulders. And Navi, there we speak it. There we whisper it. A game that seemed to be out of control. Banana now caught out. There's the shackle off of the creep. Carapace is up and another kill for Havos. Five are down. One set of racks is down. They're going to go to work on the tier three. Buybacks aren't coming out. Dare we think it? Could it be? Navi bringing down the last remaining vestiges of hope for Tongfu. The tier fours under assault. Kuro and Dindy. Looking to farm the well. If they dare come out, they think better of it and move on to the tier three bottom. It's gone. And now the last racks. One's down. Can you say Mega Creeps? Navi. He got him. One more. This is what you call one for the road. Man, I can't. I cannot believe that they actually did it. Funnick's going to be running here as well, though, from Tongfu. Funnick vacuumed back. Locked down, cleaned up. Pretty sure that's not what anyone here cares about. Tongfu. Played a phenomenal game, too. Played so well for so long here in game three. But the hook heard round the world, Draskal. That first hook that shut them down when they were pushing the last time. Man, we're going to see Puppy spotted out. He will be doomed. We're actually going to see Havos going to work now, getting a kill as well. Puppy, Dindy's there to try and help him, though. He's not doomed. Puppy trying to juke him around. And, yeah, keeping it on him. There's the MPL to follow it up. Puppy still alive. Mets through him. GG! Navi! has snatched the berth in the upper bracket grand finals from the brink of defeat. A game that looked to have slipped away from them and they shocked the world. The capacity crowd here on the floor.